Hey everyone, Eric with Rockin' H, and you know you buy one of these cool trucks and it never fails that you knock it off a shelf or somebody bumps it and you break one of these mirrors right here. What a pain in the butt that is. They're supposed to come with an extra set of mirrors when you purchase them, but you know, sometimes it just never works. So in this video what we'll do is we're going to start out by drawing a set of replacement 379 mirrors. That way we have a good source for them, so if we break one, we can replace it. We're going to open up a new project in Tinkercad to kick this project off. And Tinkercad.com, that's a free program anyone can use. It's fairly simple and straightforward, and I recommend, if you have any desire at all, to give it a go. Because, like I said, the price to learn is cheap. You will want a good mouse on your laptop or home PC. If you don't have one, I'd recommend you get one. At least it seems to work well for me. First thing we're going to do though is I actually have a set of DCP mirrors here at my house that I'm using to kind of break this project open. Here in Tinkercad, I went over here to this basic shapes uh, area and just drug a square out to the plane. Now this is your plane um, and you can begin resizing objects here. They default, a cube defaults to 20 millimeters all the way around. If you're not familiar with millimeters, I suggest you get that way because uh, that seems to be the default language in most or in a lot of 3D softwares. The factory DCP mirror is about 3.34 millimeters wide. I'm using a, a micrometer to measure the one that I have here at the house. To keep this simple, we're just going to go with whole numbers and do 3.25. The thickness of this particular piece is 1.15, so we'll just make this, and we'll do it 1.15 just for fun. And then the initial uh, square of the mirror is about 7.4 millimeters tall so we'll just make this 7.5 okay you can actually grab these corners here any of these white squares you can drag your project out and make it bigger however you want I like to just click them and that highlights the square and then I type in exactly what I want as you just saw me do three different times so this is the initial mirror. Now the mirror in the DCP la uh, land is a lot different than the one we're making. It's got some texture. Let's see if we can see this on the back. On the back side of this mirror it's got some texture, a small hump, and then you can actually see it almost looks like there's two pieces here. A back piece where this mirror right here is attached and then a front piece uh, that would emulate, replicate you know, a framework with the mirror being able to be pushed in or out, you know, so you can see vehicles behind you. So we're going to try and make that happen as in addition to and everything else. So let's see what we can do. We're going to go back and um, if you right click, you can move the plane so you can look at your object in different ways. And then if you hold the left key down, left mouse button down, and the shift key, you can actually, if you hold your right mouse button down, you can move the plane so you can look all the way around your object. And if you hold the shift key and the right mouse key, you can move the plane like I am here. So that makes it pretty simple and easy to navigate your what you're looking at. If you have um, a wheel on your mouse, you can zoom in and zoom out really, really easily like that. Okay, on our object, what we're going to do is we're going to try, we're going to drag out some other tools here. On the back side of the mirror, it looks like there's a little concave feature to that. So what I want to do is try and get that somewhat close. Right here at this, this double arrow that's arced, that allows you, you can actually drag, you can grab that and then turn your object um, what I like to do is just type in the degrees in which I want this to turn. So I want to turn it 90 degrees. Then we're going to come in here and like we did before, um, we said this was 
1.1. So we're going to make this 1.1. And how tall was it? We said 7.5. We're going to do 7 because it's actually supposed to be inside of a frame. And then the width here is 7. And actually, we wanna, we're going to take a look at this one quick. We said this was 3.25. So we're going to make that 3.25. Let's make it 3.15. Now I'm going to highlight all these objects because they're all askew. And then up here in the top right hand corner we have this align button which is awesome. And if you click that you see all of these different ways you can align your project. So I'm going to align it so they're together, so they're the same height, and they're centered on the same axis. You can see our blue half moon feature is actually inside of the red rectangle or, or the frame in which our mirror is going to be made. I don't know really, I can't explain exactly how I'm going to accomplish this because I'm not very skilled at this. What I know is I work on things until I get the results I want. So that's basically my mode of operation here. Um, so I'm actually going to move the red box out. I'm going to make my blue object, I'm actually going to make that one point. 7.5 and then I'm going to center these again okay then what I want to do here I'm going to move this okay I have an idea on how I'm going to make this work and make it look cool so we're just going to play with this until we get it the way we want it. What I think I'm going to do here, I'm going to take this blue object, I'm going to duplicate this, and then I'm going to move it out. I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to move that object. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this blue object into a hole. Now why would I do that? The way you delete uh, delete spaces on objects is to turn another object into a hole and then uh, join them together. So we have this hollow part now, which is the hole, which is the copy of the which is the blue object. Now I'm just going to group these two together and see now you can see through this. So my goal here is I want to make what looks like this round piece on the back side of my mirror. And I'm not sure this will work, but we're going to try. I'm going to highlight my blue object. And the front side of the mirror is actually set inside of this frame over here on the red rectangle. So what I want to do is I'm going to go back and make that one millimeter. So it's just slightly shorter than the box. Now let's just take a look at this and see how it turned out right here. So we're going to zoom in on this. So now if you were to take, say, a Molotov chrome pen, you could chrome this blue area. I mean, it won't be blue on the 3D printed item, but we could chrome this blue area, and then this would be our frame for the mirror. And then we're making double use of this object because now it has that mirror, you know, the, the concave shape to it, like the backside of the real 379 mirror. I'm going to make this one object now. I'm going to group these two pieces together. And then this cone shape right here, I'm going to drag this up. And there we go. I think that's going to work. Next, on the bottom of the 379 mirror is a round mirror. 
or below the rectangle on the 379 mirror. And that is going to be four millimeters in diameter. So I want to drag out a cylinder. I'm gonna make my cylinder four millimeters that way, tall, and then make the diameter, whoops, not five, we're gonna do four, and four, enter. Now we're gonna turn this 90 degrees, and then we're gonna make it 1.45, in thickness. I'm just moving these together to get them in the neighborhood. The little bit of that mirror is all, also has kind of an indentation right here. So what we're going to do on that, how we're going to make that is to copy this mirror. And I want to move that out see I want to use a different whoops there we go and we made that one four correct yep so instead of four millimeters we're gonna make this 3.5 millimeters and that was 1.45 so we're just going so we're going to make this one 1. And maybe that's not it. We'll do 1. Point, we'll do 1.25. Now I'm going to align these parts and I wasn't even I wasn't thinking correctly about what I wanted to do here actually all I have to do is move this front object into this object into the move the front object into the rear object and then turn this part into a hole and then that will create the space we need to make it look mirror like uh, like on the the real thing we're replicating I'm gonna turn this part into a hole and I'll show you why in just a moment and then down here on the snap grid it's set at one millimeter I'm gonna change that from one millimeter to off and what will happen as I move these two together I have infinite control on how I move this object now so prior I was moving that object one millimeter at a time and now I have finite uh, ability to move that. Now you can see I've merged these two objects together. You can see by how far because the dark side of this object is attached to the rear and then this part is exposed obviously. Okay, I think this amount of, of space will be removed will be adequate for what we're trying to do I'm gonna click my hole and turn it colored again then I'm gonna click the front one turn it into a hole and now I'm going to merge these two together I've selected them now I've joined them and you can see we have a space for what looks like the indention of a mirror Now I'm going to select these two objects and I'm holding my shift key as I click them and I want these two to be merged like that and oh and then we need to center them here as well Now on the real mirror, 
this bottom mirror is attached to the top mirror just like so and you can see here that these two pieces are touching one another now that we have the two mirrors made we need to put some attachment arms so there will be some angle pieces coming out from the mirror that will go into the die cast I'm gonna grab a cylinder and drag that out to the plane and make it and on the real mirror that I'm replicating they are one millimeter thick actually 1.09 but we're just gonna do one then I'm gonna rotate that 90 degrees I need to move this cylinder that I've made I'm gonna turn my snap grid from off to one millimeter I'm gonna click it and use my arrow keys to move this around and before I get too far I'm gonna go ahead and make these one solid object that way if I need to move things and or change anything um, I don't have to move I don't have to select both objects I can just select the one I'm going to center these like so and then on the rear mirror on the real mirror this rod will be at the top now I'm moving this one millimeter at a time here and if you need to move this a little bit more intricately this box here tells you how far that rod is from the plane so you can type in exactly well not 10 um, if you you can type in exactly how high you, you want that or you can move it with a bit more precision and that'll do now I'm just going to move this so oh that's too far I'm going to turn this into a hole so I can see that I have joined these two pieces and you can looks like we've joined them I'm going to go ahead and turn my snap grid off and then move that over a little more before we get much farther we do need to resize this it's 20 millimeters long right now on the real mirror it looks like that is approximately 6.3 mils so we'll just type in 6.3 and see where we go okay we gotta move that back and turn our snap grid off and voila I should do and looking at it from the top this is centered from this total distance from the back of that curve there to the front of this flat spot and I'm gonna move this over just a little bit so it's centered more on the rectangle rather than the entire object I'm gonna duplicate that and then drag the copy down next now this is the hardest part for me I don't know if the rest of you will have trouble like this but for me making angles is is a bit of a challenge I always have a I have a tough time with this so on the 379 Peterbilt mirror on the DCP mirror there are two angles two angle parts uh, going from the front here out and then there is um, another one going from um, 
on this one it would be from here to here okay so we'll go ahead and get that going I'm gonna duplicate these two pieces and then I'm gonna drag them out if I was an engineer I think this would be a lot simpler than the way I am doing it what I found when I'm doing this is I just make these two I exaggerate how long they need to be so I'm just gonna go arbitrarily nine millimeters here and then I'm going to begin just turning them to get what I need, the distance that I need. Okay, that's the wrong way, so let's go ahead and change that. And here I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard. On the real model, there should be approximately 6.3 millimeters between the end of this attachment point and the end of this one. At this second, I don't think we have that. We can actually pull a ruler out to the plane and we can see that zero here is the point that we need it is is we've placed it so that zero here is the end of our objects and what this will tell us is how far the object is from zero so in this case In this case, the attachment points here are six mils from zero. And I said we need to be 6.33. So I don't know that we can gain a whole lot and make that a whole lot better, but we'll give it a try. I'm going to select our two objects. I'm going to just turn them a little more. Uh, where's that? At? There it is. I'm going to make those uh, negative. Let's just move them 10 degrees. That may have been too much. And we're at 6.97 now from zero. So we're actually too wide now. So we're going to undo all that and instead of 10 degrees let's just do 5 and we're at 6.55 well we're gonna undo that and do negative 3 degrees and we're at 6.33 that'll work gonna zoom in Okay. Now these two are also too long now. So we're going to make that better. And we're going to click here. And we've made them 7.1. Let's just try 6.71. Let's take one millimeter out. And we are pretty close. <laughs> Let's do six, um, 6.5. Looking at it, that looks pretty darn good. Okay, cool. All right. 
Next thing we'll do, we're going to make a copy of these once more. And I'm going to move these out. And I'm going to change the color so I can see them better. On the real mirrors, there are two stubs here and on the end of these arms that actually go into the die cast. So we're going to see if we can make that happen. Well, we're not going to see if we can make that happen. We're going to make that happen. And we're going to make them 0.75 mils. And we'll have to do this individually here. 0.75. And 0.75. Okay. I'll select these parts, these two parts here. And center those then I'm going to center this one and center that here we go center and center perfect let's make sure we didn't move anything nothing's changed good now what I'm going to do I'm going to copy these two objects again and we're just going to move these over here to this one. And we'll turn our snap grid off. Let's turn it to 1.1. 1 .1. Now we're going to shorten them up. And let's see what uh, 3 mils does. Perfect. We're going to shorten them up a little more, 2.75. Okay, we turn that back to... You can see this orange here from this attachment point. I don't think I'm going to get too crazy about moving that. Uh, because, I mean, it looks big on the screen here, but we're talking about, I mean, you guys, if you've been around DCP mirrors, you know just exactly how big they are, and this will be negligible. I'm fairly confident this will be negligible. And uh, because these are angles, and I'm not the best at moving these things around just yet, I think I'm going to leave them just the way they are, and then not risk moving things and changing things up a lot. That could be a mess for me. So this would be the passenger side mirror. And I think what I'm going to do is move these four objects out. And I'm going to turn my snap grid off again. There. So I'm going to leave these artificially long. They don't need to be this long, but I'm leaving them that long. And then as I'm looking at my real mirror, it looks like I've forgotten to do one thing. And that is to make the arm from here down to there. So we'll make that quick too. I'm going to ungroup everything. I'm going to copy this one. I'm going to move it out. Then I'm going to make this um, let's make this nine again. And then we're going to turn it uh, 45. Let's see what we get here. Okay, we're going to turn that 
five more degrees. Yeah. Okay, we see it coming out the bottom here and up the front, so we're going to move that in just a little. Nope, too much. Turn our snap grid off and move that out where we want it, like so. Then what I'm going to do here is we're going to shorten that up to just seven. And then we're going to make that five degrees again. Move that up a little bit. And we'll group that and see how that goes. All right. Now that we have the passenger side mirror done, we're going to make a copy of this. And we're going to make the driver's side. So we'll copy that. I'm just going to move it over here onto the other side of this peg here or this wire and then going to highlight that going to uh, going to ungroup it then I just want to group that structure there and then going to move our mirrors to the left using my arrow keys I'm going to highlight that structure again, and I'm going to flip it 180 degrees. Just like that. Now I'm going to zoom in and move that. And join those pieces together. Turning off my grid, going to move that. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Sometimes, depending on how you have your plane oriented, your arrows, your arrow keys won't function correctly or, or like you expect. So sometimes you got to move your plane in order to get the keys to, to move where you want them to. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Finally, we have this cross member here in the wrong position on the driver's side mirror. So we're going to ungroup. Then I'm going to highlight this and we're just going to play with the geometry here. You just have to work this out until you get them to match. I'm going to choose 80 degrees arbitrarily and Looky there, I think that's going to be okay. So, looking at these two mirrors here, that looks pretty darn good. I think we can live with that. Okay. Next, I'm going to select all these parts, group them up. And after I took a break from this and reconsidered how I want to place these mirrors on the wire, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and... Um, Whoops, didn't mean to do that. I think I'm going to change my idea here. I'm going to flip that 90 degrees. I think I'm going to put... I'm just going to orient the, the mirrors on the wire a little differently than I originally thought. I'm going to change, I'm going to turn these 90 degrees. Actually, and then I want to turn them so it's that facing out. So I'll have these electroplated eventually. And I've learned from some of the other projects I've had electroplated that the way you have your parts oriented matters. And I found, oops, that was too much. Flip that back. I just want it on its. There we go. And I found if you could put more space between your parts, that seems, at least in my experience, I think you get better results. And we're going to double this width. I 
gonna turn my grid on to one mil. There. Now I have my two mirrors on this peg. And I just barely want them touching because I want to leave this part long so builders can cut those down to whatever size they need to fit whatever cab they're working on. I find it's always better to have a little more peg than not enough. And if we make any mistakes cutting these apart from the wire, then we have a little more wiggle room to, to work with as well. Okay. I'm not satisfied that this is the smartest way to do this, but this is a way to do this. And for demonstration purposes, I'll go ahead and show you how I would do the rest of this. I may not leave it like this, because I'm already thinking about how I could change it, and I'm pretty sure after I sleep on this, I'll want to change it a little differently anyway. But for this demonstration, this will work. Oh, we need to bring that out. Okay, we're going to copy those items, move them out, and there we go. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. And we'll make that just a little wider yet. Let's do 140. And that's it. So now we have 10 sets that we can print all at one time. And we just cut them away from this wire and they should be good to go. As I just mentioned, I may not leave them exactly the way they see them. I might uh, change up how I have these wired together um, just to be more efficient with the design and make it simple to take off this wire and uh, and get really good results. So we'll see how it goes. Anyways, this is one way you can draw up a replacement part for your 164 scale vehicles.